Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, I'm a full-time artist and I draw something new six days a week. So I document this challenge over on my Instagram and we started last August. So today I'm going to be recapping the art I made for weeks 42 and 43 of the challenge. So I do post these daily over on Instagram, but I do a recap of the artwork every couple of weeks here on YouTube and I just talk a little bit more in detail about the process, how I found painting it and if I like it or not, and talk a little bit more about the materials and method that I used. So to start week 42, I did a plein air piece in my A5 oil talent sketchbook and this is the sketchbook that I do most of my daily art in. And for this one, we went into the new forest and I drew the view. So when I'm planning on doing a plein air piece, I tend to mostly use brush pens, near colours and coloured pencils, and so that's what I use for this piece. And this is Bratley View, which is in the new forest, which isn't very far from where we live. And it was just a really lovely day and I really wanted to make the most of it. And one of the things that I love about plein air drawing is that it really limits what you can draw because sometimes I find I'm paralysed by the amount of choices that I have whereas if I do plain air I don't have as much choice so I just have to draw the view in front of me and that really is helpful for me and I really like how this one turned out I've definitely been practicing my plain air drawing more often and trying to get it in the same sort of style as my studio work and this one is quite rough and messy but I'm really pleased with the vibrancy I'm also glad that I added on the pink and the burgundy. Obviously it wasn't that saturated in real life and it was very green, but I think that really adds some interest and stops it from just being a very boring green landscape. You can also see that I was influenced a little bit by the stormy cloud pieces I've done previously, and whilst this isn't stormy, um, I, did, I do really like the interest that the clouds add, and it was like perfect blue skies but I wanted to add in a little bit more interest and overall this didn't take very long I tend to do my plein air drawings quite quickly but I'm pleased with how this one turned out. For day 247 I did this A5 painting of Leap which I don't have to hand but I'll put some close-ups on the screen and I'm really pleased with this one I did most of this whilst I was chatting to April on a Zoom call, which was really nice. So I didn't overthink the process and I just really enjoyed painting whilst chatting with her. And she's Monkey Mintaka here on YouTube and I'll link her down below. But this one feels very traditional and safe. I'm really pleased with the left hand side and all the texture that's there and the colours on the hills. I really like adding line work in my work, which is something that I've developed as I've gone through this daily challenge and definitely something that I do more often. It's obviously an English beach, so I didn't want to overdo the sky too much, and I think I really captured the mood of that day, and this is referenced from a photo I took when I went for a walk with my mum the previous week. I actually have the original listed on my Etsy shop if you're interested in purchasing this piece, but I'm really pleased with how this one turned out, and I think it would look really lovely framed and on a wall. And I also really like how detailed it is, and. Although it's more refined than my usual pieces, especially my larger ones, I do think it's painted really nicely. Day 248, I was in my comfort zone and I just went on MapCrunch and drew this view in Mexico. So this was actually from my reference post, which I share once a month on Patreon, where I collect references from my favourite sources and put them all into one place for my patrons to download. And because May was themed around maps and Google Maps and MapCrunch, I explored on that site and found lots of different references around the world. So they were all very varied and this one was just like a quintessential tropical beach. And I was really taken by the colours of the water and obviously the golden sand. So this one is quite messy, but this is very much my style. I did the usual method of putting down the gouache first and then adding on all of the details, which I used Prismacolors and a little bit of Neocolor pastels. It did feel a little bit empty, so I went ahead and added this collage down here. So I just popped in these little towels and the parasol, and those are cut from my paint palette sheets. And I don't know if it works, 
Um, the shadow definitely isn't right, but I do like that it adds a little bit more interest and also adds some narrative to this piece. One of the things I really like about this one is the waves. I really am enjoying adding on the line patterns over the water. I also really like how I left the paper showing free for the white. I think that really adds a lot of movement to the sea. Day 249 I was a little bit stuck for what to draw and when that happens I tend to head to Patreon where I support some other creators and try some of their drawing challenges. So that's what I did for this day and I went on to Sarah Dyer's Patreon and watch back a Zoom recording from July 2021. So for this one we were drawing shop fronts and there are a few warm-up exercises which were like two or five minutes and then we went on to these larger ones which I did in 20 minutes and then the one on the right was 30 minutes. And if you remember a few weeks ago I did do some shop fronts in my A5 sketchbook that I wasn't very happy with. So it was really nice to revisit that and also be really proud and see the improvements in this larger piece. I really love the colours. I'm really pleased with how they sit together as well. Um, I really like the green with the pink. This one is referenced in London and this one I think was Seville. So very different styles, very different like architecture and buildings, but I do like how they sit together. Personally, I think this quicker 20 minute one is my favorite. I love the green, but I also like the details from the little man down here and the parking sign. And then considering I spent another 10 minutes on this one on top of the 20 minutes, I don't think you can really tell. I think it's quite deceptive how long these things can take. But I do like some of the smaller details and I'm pleased with this balcony up here. This definitely has a similar sort of pastel vibe to the smaller ones I did, but I think this one just feels more confident and bolder and definitely feels more my style than those little ones. For day 250 I was still feeling a little bit stumped for what to draw and I definitely had lost my mojo. So day 250 isn't one that I'm particularly proud of. But this is something that I talked about on Instagram, which is that at least I was creative. And even if we paint something which we don't think is successful, the whole point of this daily challenge is to paint, whether you like it or not. So it was mine and Mitch's anniversary the day before, and he bought me a beautiful prayer plant, which I really wanted to draw. I was really taken by the leaves. They have these really gorgeous pink veins on the leaves, and it came in this lovely pink pot. And I really wanted to try and capture that. And I really wanted it to be like loose. I was very inspired by this artist on Instagram, which again, I'll link down below. And they're called Michelle Lewis. And I really love some of their work and I was trying to emulate that in this one. But I think I overworked it. I'm not happy with this one, but I liked it a lot more when I added in the stripes and the busy background. Again, this is a color palette, which I don't use very often. But lately I've been trying to push myself outside of that and use more purples and, and shades which I don't often reach for. So to me I definitely overworked this one. Um, it, I think the main disappointment was coming from that it didn't look like I wanted it to in my head. Which is often the battle that as artists we're always struggling with. But this one surprisingly had a lot of love on Instagram which I was really grateful for. And it's always nice to see it through other people's eyes because they help me to see like the good parts and I think that's one of the benefits of posting on social media. So at the end of week 42 I actually hosted a giveaway because I reached 10k followers over on my Instagram and I really wanted to celebrate and for that one I shared a piece which actually isn't part of the daily challenge but one that I was really pleased with and that's this one. But for actual day 251, I'd gone on a drawing date with my friend Kate. She is Hey Hey Ginger Art over on Instagram, and again, I'll pop her link down below. But we'd gone into town and we'd gone to the City Art Gallery and had a look around there. And then because it was such a beautiful day, we headed into the local parks and just sat and drew for a good couple of hours. So I took quite a few sketchbooks with me and I was determined not to take them and not use them, so I did quite a few spreads. This one is the one that I started with, and we've got the view of one of the larger buildings, and then the view which was in front of us, which is this like brick 
brick pillared tunnel which um, is covered in wisteria. We were a couple of weeks late for when it was all in bloom but um, it was still covered in all of the greenery and it didn't look as difficult when we sat down to draw it until we actually drew it and found out that it was very complicated. So this one took quite a while but I really love the graphic quality of these pieces. I'm really happy with the spread as a whole and I'm glad I split it up into panels. So again I used um, brush pens, coloured pencils and neo colours for this one. And then I moved on to some quicker pieces and in this one I did some quick tree studies. So we stayed sat in the same place and there were quite a few different things I could draw from that spot. So for this one I was really taken by the trees that were in front of us and I'm really pleased with how these turned out, especially considering how fast they were to draw. And the thing I love about this one the most is this little man here on the bench, which I think adds a lot of narrative. And I really like the stylization of these trees. And then I moved on to this spread, which is similar to the first one, the larger one in the A5, but a lot quicker. This wasn't timed, but I was aware that I wanted to draw it quicker than the other one. So you can see the marks are a lot looser and like the lines are very messy. But I'm really pleased with this one. I really love the butteriness of the new colours, especially on the tree on the right. It was a really hot day, so the new colours were melting a little bit in the sun. Not in terms of like turning into liquid, but definitely softer than they normally are. So it's really nice to use them to cover more space and it felt very different to how I normally use them as well. I also did a spread in my no pressure sketchbook where I just swatched some pencils and pens because the good thing about having an artist drawing day is we can share supplies and I just did a load of swatches in there too. It's rare for the daily art challenge that I do more than one spread, although you'll see in week 43 I did do that as well. It was really nice to feel like the art just flowed, especially after a week where it felt very forced and I wasn't feeling very creative. It really helped to have that day where I could just spend the afternoon drawing with my friend and I was really pleased with all of the pieces that I did. So on to week 43 now and this time I painted big again and I took a piece of A3 paper, taped it on the wall and painted this view of another English beach. So you can really see how this was kind of influenced and has moved on from that smaller A5 one. This is actually the same beach taken with a reference photo taken the other way down the beach. And this lighthouse here actually isn't from that reference photo. But if you've seen last week's video, which I will link up in the cards, you'll see the process for this one and how much I enjoyed it. So it felt very different when I was painting this one because I used a lot of new techniques and I was very tactile with it. So you can again see how some of my sketchbook work influences these larger pieces, especially like with the clouds and the sky. You can see that I've added all the lines here. And one of the things I really enjoyed creating was this texture down here where I scraped into the wet paint to make some of these marks. I also added some like drips in the sky where I was adding new colours and then taking it away. And like down here you can see I added some paint and then wiped it off with a tissue. So all things which I don't usually do and it definitely felt really good to really play with this piece and also be pleased with the result. So I'd done the painting and it really didn't feel finished. Something was missing. So I decided to add on this collage of a lighthouse here. And again, this is just cut from my paint palette sheets. And I just used blue tag at first to see if it would work. And I really like how it finishes off this piece. Obviously this beach doesn't have a lighthouse in real life, but it really did feel like something was missing and I think it just adds a subject there to draw your eye. So overall I'm really pleased with this piece and again I've got the original listed in my Etsy shop. Day 253 I was back in the A4 sketchbook and again I was doing another challenge from Sarah Dyer's Patreon. So this is very different for me, very out my comfort zone because if you've seen any of my work before, you know I don't draw people or faces very much. And the main reason that I don't do that is because there's so much choice and I never know how to draw someone and make it my style. 
I obviously feel more confident with my style in terms of landscapes and things, but when it comes to people, I just don't know how to make it look like mine because there's so many options for like the eyes, the noses and the mouth. So this was the perfect exercise to try a lot of different things and see what I liked. And this was just a really fun spread. Obviously it's very different to my usual stuff, but it was very enjoyable to do and I really love the colours and it does feel very children's book inspired. There are some faces I love and some faces that I'm not very happy with, but that's the point of this piece. And it definitely has taught me that like I can come back to this and see what worked. So if I want to do more people in the future, I know I can come back to this spread and see which ones inspire me more than others. And I can also do another spread like this again. This would work for other subjects as well as people. But I think for me, because people is like my weakest point, I definitely want to do another spread like this and try even more styles. There's a mix of media on here, so lots of um, brush pens, some gouache and some collage. So I really was just feeling playful and trying lots of different things and I'm really pleased with the end result. For day 254 I was back in my A5 sketchbook and I just created these really quick thumbnails of nature in these little panels. So this is actually my most liked piece over on Instagram and they're very loose, very messy. You can see that I did them quite quickly and I didn't spend a huge amount of time on this page. I mapped out the squares and the panels first and I did that really roughly so they're not lined up or anything, I haven't used a ruler. I just drew those and then I went on to a copyright free image site, uh, searched nature and then found lots of different views and just drew them really fast in here. So I used a mix of Tombows again, Ecoline brush pens, Neo Colours and Prismacolor pencils. And I didn't have like a limited colour palette or anything, I just used whatever I could find. I just used the colours that I wanted to and that matched that landscape. And there's definitely like an unfinished quality to a lot of these panels. There's a lot of the original sketchbook page showing through. But there's definitely a charm to these and I really like the colours. Obviously, because there isn't a limited colour palette, there's a lot of colours here, but I do think it works really nicely. And that's probably because I've used sort of that um, limey olive green in quite a few, and then like the darker greens that tie them all together. I think my favourite one of this page is this one down here, just because I love a lighthouse. But I'm really pleased with all of them, and there's not one that I'm really disappointed with. So as a spread, I think it works really nicely. I really enjoy working in panels, as you know, and I definitely recommend this. It was a really good challenge to draw lots of different things and also not worry about the end result. If you've watched any of my previous recaps, you'll know that I started a virtual road trip series, which was in my little 12x12 talent sketchbook. And we did a series over, I think it was six or seven weeks, where I was doing a virtual road trip on Google Maps and going down the Pacific Coast Highway, which is in California. And I made that into an interactive road trip, so I put polls on my stories to get my audience involved and get them to choose what I should draw. And I had so much fun with it that I knew I wanted to do another one. So on day 255, I started the next road trip, which is in Switzerland. So this is the spread that I created as day one of this Swiss road trip, and this was when we were exploring Zurich. Switzerland is such a beautiful country that I feel like I won't be able to do the views justice, but I really love how colourful the spread is, and this was created again with my quite light wash of gouache first, and then going over it with new colours and Prismacolor pencils. The one on the left, which was the first one I did, definitely didn't turn out as I wanted it in my head, there's quite a lot of water there, but I added on these collage swans, which I think help fill the gap. And then the one on the right is more as I imagined this road trip to go. Lots of colour, um, there's a lot of interest with the architecture in the back there. This is Laufen Castle over Rhine Falls. And I just really like the stylization here. I like how I've done the clouds in the sky. 
and I really ramped up the colour in this red, so I think that's why I like it so much. There's a lot more detail here than some of my other road trip spreads in this sketchbook, so I'll be interested to see how I do the next ones on this road trip. But I think it was a nice start and I'm really excited to continue it. So I mentioned before that I generally only do one piece or one sketchbook spread per day, except for when I did that drawing day. Before day 256 I wanted to do quite a few, and so I did three spreads in my A5 sketchbook. And these are all of the same view, which I found from a random pin drop, which was on Google Maps. And you can see I kept things super loose, they're quite messy and they're not very finished, but they are playful and fun. You can see like I was being quite quick with my mark making and trying to get down things that I thought were important. And you can see like I haven't coloured in all of the buildings or all of the vegetation, but it was a really good experiment for me. I used similar colours for all three, so they do tie in together. And this one is different to the other two. So the first one and the second is of the same view over the riverbank, but the third one is as you turn a little bit to the right and there's this hotel here on the banks. And you can see again, I was really stylizing the building and keeping things really simple and using a lot of negative space to create this one. So it's really nice to do something quite unfinished and loose. Although I often try and create loose work in my paintings and like a looser style, it was nice to know that these are very purposefully kept unfinished and I was really exploring mark making and I can see that in these. So a really nice way to fill your sketchbook and definitely something that I want to do more of. So the very last spread for week 43 was day 257 and I created this panel page in my A5 sketchbook. It was a bank holiday on this day here in the UK and so Mitch and I went for a walk because the weather was so lovely and we just walked to our local nature reserve. I took lots of photos on that walk because we went a different way to normal and found this little path that went like behind the woodlands and around the lake and led us to a bird hide. So it was really nice to take those photos and actually use them and put them into my sketchbook. And I'm really pleased with the result. I really love the colours that I've chosen. I love the boldness of these greens. And you can see I've done like the stripy field effect I love. But instead of doing like a base of green and then drawing darker green stripes over the top, I've really gone for this like minimal style where I've drawn like thicker lines for the fields and I think that adds a lot of movement. On this large one on the left you can see I've added some cows which I've never drawn before so that was quite a fun challenge. And then over on the right I've drawn the path and then one of the fields from another bird hide. And over here is the original bird hide which we walked to in the first place. So again, I really like the colour palette. I really enjoy using the pink and the maroon here. And these were using some new luminance coloured pencils I'd kindly been gifted by my friend Emma. And again, I'll link her down below. So it was really fun to use some new colours. I'm really enjoying using luminance coloured pencils and that's all I use for this spread. So there's no new colours or brush pens. And I just really like the stylization of this one. It was quite simple to do and it was nice to actually use the photos from the walk and I know that this will remind me of that day and it didn't take a huge amount of time but I think sometimes the spreads which don't take very long are often the ones where I feel the most inspired and I'm really happy with the result. So that's all of the daily artwork that I created for weeks 42 and 43. I really hope you enjoyed watching this one and at the end of these videos I always share my favourite piece. I think that last one for day 257 is definitely up there, but I also really like the shop front, which was this one, just because I know that I tried this before in my A5 sketchbook and it wasn't successful, so I was really pleased that I could try it again and see the improvement and feel really proud of those ones. So I'd love to know which is your favourite down below in the comments. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, then I do post them every day over on there. But I'll also be back in two weeks to do a recap for weeks 44 and 45. 
So I'll pop all of the references that I used for each day down below in the description box, as well as all the links to the people that I've mentioned. There's also a playlist if you want to catch up on the other weeks of the Daily Art Challenge, and I will see you next Sunday with a new video. See you later!